What's up, YouTube? you? For today's video, we're in for worst Max Raid Battle Trainer Pokemon Team. We haven't done a theme team in probably a week. I'm feeling a lot better, and I'm really excited to do this team. Now, when you do a raid battle, right, sometimes you won't have a full party, or you're doing the Max Raid Battle by yourself, and you notice these NPC trainers will actually fill in the spots where you didn't have a trainer. Now, some of their support Pokemon can be really, really helpful. And then on the other hand, some of the times that can be really, really bad and make you very frustrated. Man, what's going on with Pokeball guy there? Anyway, mm, uh, so what I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to have the six worst Pokemon on my team using their exact same sets and some of the items they get too. And I'm going to be doing two battles. This thing was really hard to do because the Pokemon was simply so bad. If you're excited for the theme teams to return, please drop a like on the video. And I want to know in the comment section, what do you think is the worst uh, NPC trainer Pokemon. All right, this is the battle against Flare and Fluff on my Discord, and we got a big Pikachu lead. Pikachu is going to wrap me in an electric web. Unfortunately, my Magikarp really needed to go second there because what I was trying to get is the Focus Ash and Flail strategy going. Pikachu would have got absolutely bodied. Um, unfortunately, I outsped, and it's not going to be going very well for Magikarp, and Magikarp is, uh, is going to be going down to the Pikachu. Doesn't matter. I've still got five more Pokemon left. How can we deal with this Electro Web uh, Pikachu? Also, if you want to check my Discord out, that's in the link of the description too. So now we're going to go into EV. Uh, the Magikarp was max speed and max attack EVs, by the way. And EVs, EVs are max speed and max attack as well. Uh, we've got Adaptability, Quick Attack, doing some wild damage there to the Pikachu. Pikachu going for another uh, Electro Web. Now, Electro Web's going to drop my speed, but since Quick Attack is priority, it's not going to matter. I'm going to be able to take it out. Now, we've got Helping Hand, which is completely useless. When you're in battle with the EV, I found... He'd always use Helping Hand. Sometimes it was good, sometimes it was kind of bad when it did at the start when you didn't do a lot of damage. With the Magikarp, the constant um, Hydro Pump missing all the time. And uh, yeah, it, it pretty much just being a weak Pokemon too is uh, like making it one of the worst NPC Pokemon. Now we're going to swap out the Eevee here because we got a Waylord coming out and we've got my Wobbuffet coming in. Now Wobbuffet, right, um, it's going to get Body Slammed by... <laughs> oh my goodness, did you see that? It got Body Slammed by Waylord. I've got Rocky Helmet on this set. Now, I've given it the exactly same moves. We've got Counter, Mirror Coat, Amnesia, and Safeguard. Pretty much this Pokemon is completely useless. You've got to rely on it using Mirror Coat and Counter at the same time. Most of the time, it gets it wrong or it just stands there and uses Safeguard and Amnesia and does nothing. So that's why I put it on this team compared to some of the other ones. Speaking of which, I actually misclicked there on the Amnesia. I was meant to go for a Counter, but that is all good because Waylord has dived under the grass. I mean, well, it, it's actually, it, it's gone into the grass. It's not water. It's gone under that grass and it's come up going for a big dive. It's about a uh, three hit KO. Getting some Rocky Helmet damage there and uh, getting some nice counter damage off on the Waylord. Nearly absolutely burying it. So now it's like, okay, if I go for a counter again, that'll take out the Waylord, right? Or it's going to go down to Rocky Helmet anyway. So... This was pretty good, right? And now their Waylord is going to go for a Whirlpool. Spin me right round, baby. I'm not going to do any damage, right? It's not going to get affected by the Rocky Helmet. And my Wobbuffet is not going to do any counter damage. I'm getting countered at the moment. So now it's like, okay, if they go for Whirlpool again, I'll just go for Miracode. And that should be enough to, you know, nearly take them out. But then if they go for a physical move, I'll still take them out with a Rocky Helmet, right? At the moment, Wobbuffet cannot swap. Uh, we're going to get a big body slam from Waylord. Almost, uh taking me out there and uh, my Rocky Helmet is going to take out that Waylord. So we have Waylord of Pikachu so far for the team. I went for Miracote there. It's, uh, the Miracote is going to uh, hit the trainer, but it's not going to do anything. Our next Pokemon coming out here is the Meowth. This looks like the, uh, this actually looks like the Event Meowth. So I can go for a Counter or a Miracote. I'm going to go for Counter because Meowth usually has like a uh, normal type uh, physical moves, and we got a fake out there. I mean, when you look at the damage, right, the Rocky Helmet actually did more than, than the fake out. So now we get assurance from the uh, the Meowth there. It doesn't take out Alfie. Alfie getting some more uh, Rocky Helmet damage there, and uh, now we're going to go for the counter on the Meowth. Even though it did so little damage to Wolfert, uh, Meowth doesn't have a lot of health, and actually nearly took it out in one shot with the counter. So Meowth, I've asked to go for a physical move to take out my Wolfert or swap. It's going to go for the assurance again, and uh, down goes my Wolfert. 
but Bonfett actually did a really good job there. It actually took out Meowth there with one counter and a couple of Rocky Helmets. Rocky Helmet would be a nice little item on Wolfert, um, if in the uh, trainer's team. I just gave them all the, like, each one of them an item, because some of the others had items, such as Magikarp, right? All right, so now we've got a Flareon coming in here. I'm going to bring in the Mudbray. Now, Mudbray's probably the best Pokemon on this team. I had to make a decision for, like, the six Pokemon. And uh, now we got a, uh, a normal gem, Retaliate, coming from the uh, Flareon. And I actually tanked that one. I'm running Max Health and um, Max Attack there. we got High Horsepower, and Flareon is going to get a horseshoe, hit it straight in the head, and that one is going to go down. Now, the item Mudbray has is Focus Sash 2. If you notice in the uh, max raids, a couple of the Pokemon have Focus Sashes, which is nice. A lot of the time, though, they go down to Sandstorm and things like that, so it's usually kind of useless. Now, Noctowl is going to come in. I can't really do too much this apart from Rock Tomb. That's kind of the best thing I can do. And uh, we, we were in a pretty good spot at the moment. So Noctowl is going to sit out the Reflect. Noctowl is fairly bulky on the special side, not so much the physical side. Uh, Rock Tomb is still going to do some pretty good damage. Like, that's still about a four-hit KO, uh, and we get those nice little uh, speed drop there. Always drops to speed that move. Now it's like, okay, there's no point me swapping out. Let's just go for Rock Tomb again on the Knockdown. And, uh, you know, it's going to go down anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So uh, Knockdown's going to go for Psychic, and William is going to go down. Um, if I didn't mention already, I named the Pokemon after the trainers. So we still got three Pokemon. Well, I've got two others, and uh, we got Martin Solrock. Martin Solrock is probably the worst Pokemon out of all of them. So pretty much what it does, right, you'll find it uses Cosmic Power or Rock Polish, like most of the time. It will hardly even attack at the most frustrating times. Has this happened to anyone? You're about to win a raid, right? All you need, right, is Sorok to use Rock Throw or Psychic and it uses Cosmic Power. Because it uses Cosmic Power or Rock Polish, right, you end up losing the road, you get the, the raid, not the road, and then you get blown out of the den, right, and you're salty as. That's happened to me a lot of times. Anyway, so we got the uh, Lantern coming in here. What this set is, it's a Cosmic Power set, people. I had to run a Cosmic Power on this one. It's a Max Health and Max, a special defensive set. Now, sorok has got some pretty good defense already, so I thought this would be pretty good. I've got Leftovers as the item on it too. Sort of same fitting for this style of uh, you know set. So Rock Throw is a physical move, and Psychic is a special move. So it's a little bit of a mixed attacker. Now, we've got Lantern. Go for a Skull there. Skull's going to do a lot of damage against old Martin Solrock. I tank it pretty well, though, and I'm going to go for a Psychic. Now, Lantern's got some very good special defense. I was kind of hoping to get like a special defense drop. That'd be really, really nice. And... Uh, uh, you know, Solrock is definitely going to go down to maybe two more skulls there. So the Reflect has worn off, which is good for the Eevee at least. I can, you know, I can at least go for maybe a quick attack or something like that. And uh, I was thinking, what should I do here? Should I go for a Dynamax Solrock? <laughs> should I or should I go for like a Dynamax Solrock, then go for Max Mindstorm? Or should I go for a Rock Throw? Um in Dynamax for my sinking here, or should I save the Dynamax for another Pokemon? I decided to save it for another Pokemon. I actually almost swapped then. Uh, thank goodness I didn't. Icy Wind's not going to do a lot of damage to me. It's going to drop my speed. Not that it matters because Solrock is a very slow Pokemon too. That's another thing too. Uh, Solrock is slow. Mudbray is slow. Wobbuffet is slow. They're all quite slow Pokemon, so you won't be expecting anything out of them like really, really quick. So they'll get outsped by the max raid Pokemon a lot of the time too. At least Sorok um, doesn't go down to Sandstorm, but it's, it's just generally useless. So Lantern's going to go for another Scald there. That's going to be doing a lot of damage. I guess they're trying to burn me, and they do get the burn, but I just thought, let's keep going for Psychic. If a burn does happen, uh, that'll be really bad. Rock Throw won't be doing very good damage. So unfortunately, I don't get any Psychic special defense drops, but it has dropped Lantern a little bit in health for maybe for my Eevee or my other Pokemon. I wonder if you can guess what it is. Now, um, I, I, once again, I'd rate Mudbray as the best Pokemon on this team. Probably the more useful than all the other ones. But I had to come up with a team of six, right? It's quite difficult to have the last one. And it'll be Clefairy as well. It'll be out of Mud, Mud, Mudbray and Clefairy. Clefairy can actually sometimes be handy with Life Dew. Anyway, so Solrock is going to go down there. And we've got two more Pokemon remaining. So back into the Eevee. Eevee's got quite good health still. So I thought maybe we could go and Dynamax into Big Eevee. Then I could turn Quick Attack into Max Strike Right. Now, the other move I had was Round, which was pretty horrible on Eevee. Like, Eevee, like, Round isn't a very good move, right? And uh, Quick Attack's pretty, you know, it, it's pretty bad as well. And most of the time, it's using Helping Head. So now we're going to go into Dynamax Eevee. And uh, this is pretty interesting because Eevee's going to get... I did I did remember the candies, people. I did remember those candies. Um, we're going to have a big Max Strike um, coming from Eevee. It's also got Adaptability, too, which is nice. It powers the, um, you know, stab moves up 
And in this case, that is going to be uh, normal type moves. So we're going to go for a max strike. I didn't think this would take Lantern out in one shot, but it still do some like reasonable damage. So two max strikes to take out the Lantern and max strike also drops speed as well. Not that it mattered. And uh, in this case, it did matter. Most of the time it doesn't, but I got my speed drop too. So it's sort of like a speed drop for a speed drop. So now I can go for another max strike. I have to watch out that I didn't use max strike, like max strike on round. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be pretty bad. So now they're sort of thinking, should they bring in... I can see the rest of the team, right? They've got Lantern and Nocta. Now they're going to go for the Dynamax on the Lantern. So Lantern will most definitely leave the uh, the next Max Strike and Bow to hit me with like a Max Geyser coming off um, Scold or something like that. So that'll be really, really bad. So we got a big Lantern here. Lantern's uh, definitely, definitely one of my favorite... Uh, you know, Gen 2 Pokemon. So big old Lantern versus big old Eevee. So go for that Max Strike. Once again, Lantern has got enough health left to actually live the next one. And I get a critical hit right there, which actually was really, really like important for me. Because Eevee, I'd say, would have gone down to a Max. I'd say they would have been going for a Max guys a Skull, right? So that was very lucky. Now, the last Pokemon left is the Noctowl, which you people did see before. And I've still got one more Pokemon in the back too. But will I be using in this battle? I'm not sure. You'll have to stick around and wait. Wait. Right, next Pokemon we got is the Knockdown. Knockdown is below half health, which is good. So I can go for one more max strike. I've got that left. And then I can just go for like a quick attack and stuff like that. Oh, the other move I had was Bite too. Um, so I guess Eevee could do something against Ghost type Pokemon in a raid. If it really had, if it wanted to, I guess, instead of going for Helping Hand. So now we've got the uh, Knockdown. Go for the Moonblast there. It's not going to really do too much. I'm going to go for a Max Strike. It's a special attacking Knockdown too. And that does a lot of damage, taking out the Knockdown. And that, my friends, is the first battle. Hope you enjoyed it. That crit at the, uh, definitely at the very end of the battle against the Lantern was extremely important. That naughty Pokeball guy. What's going on with that trainer card? All right, next battle we have... Uh, this one was on my Discord. This one was against Eckhart. Once again, people, if you do want to come and battle me or battle others or join in raids or chill, my Discord is in the description of the video. And uh, we got a Zigzagoon lead. So Zigzagoon's a pretty cool Pokemon. And we got a Magikarp lead. Magikarp I live with most of the time because Focus Sash could, you know, if anyone was bringing Stealth Rocks or something or Spikes or anything annoying like that, the Focus Sash would be gone. So this time I'm going to be going for that Hydro Pump, which always misses. This time it didn't miss. It was Clutch. And uh, it was a pretty good damage against Zigzagoon there. Now we got a pit, a pit missile Zigzagoon. Look at look at this. This is mean. Unfortunately, for, if they're running some sort of like flinching set, it'd kind of be bad um, because I'm not going to get flinched because I'm going first right. So going for another Hydro Pump here. I'm hoping Hydro Pump can land. Hydro Pump's probably about a three to four hit KO, depending if I get a crit or right. So go for another Hydro Pump on the uh, Zigzagoon. Does a little bit more damage, I think, than the last one. It's very, very close. And now we got to pay back from the Zigzagoon and Magic Up. I ain't going to be living that one. And Magic Up goes down again. I don't know how Magic Up keeps losing, guys. It's such a good Pokemon. Next, I was like, okay, you know what? It's time to use Martin's Soul Rock and actually use Cosmic Power. Like, let's see if we can get this set rolling along, right? Because, you know, Cosmic Power is an amazing move. So we've got Pit Missiles coming from the Zigzagoon. It is actually outspeeding me this time. Pit Missile actually looks pretty good, actually. You know, uh, compared to what it did before. Uh, the little missiles are a lot more pronounced. So we got four missiles coming from the Zigzagoon. That's five missiles, man. Skill Link Hacker exposed uh, Zigzagoon. What's going on here? All right, so I get hit five times there. But I do get the Cosmic Power up. I say that running something scummy like King's Rock. That's that's probably what I would do just to annoy the other person. So we got the boost up there and I got the leftover. So now I can go, I could go for another Cosmic Power or I could go for a Rock Polish because both moves are equally as so amazingly uh, useful in a, in a max raid battle. Now we're communicating, just waiting at the moment. They could go for another pin missile here. They're going to go for a Leah. They're dropping my defense. They're countering my cosmic powers. Leah, pin missile, zigzagoon. You've seen it here, folks. So now we're going to go for a uh, rock polish. That's going to boost my speed uh, sharply. So what that does is it boosts your actual stat times too. So rock polish is a very good move for boosting your speed really quickly. It's pretty much the same equivalent as agility, right? Now, I can opt to go for a rock throw. Or a Psychic. I can't go for a Psychic because it's a Dark type. So let's go for a Rock Throw. Throw that Rock on the Zigzagoon. That, actually, that was really mean. Zigzagoon is going to go down. So we're off to a flying start there with uh, the Soul Rock. And it's actually uh, 5 all at the moment. Actually, I'd say Soul Rock. Like, just th I'm still thinking of that. It's like Soul Rock definitely has to be the most... Like, the, the worst Pokemon out of all of them. I have to say it is. A Soul Rock or Wobbuffet. Sometimes Wobbuffet can be handy if it chooses, like, Miracode or Counter. 
One of the, like one of those two moves. Anyway, so we're just waiting for my opponent to bring their Pokemon. I know Solrock's a scary Pokemon, guys. I know it's a scary Pokemon, but you have to like you gotta deal with it, right? So the next Pokemon we got is the Yum Master. Yum Master is pretty cool. Um, I can go for a Rock Throw against it, or I can just go for a Psychic. Um, if it does have a Ghost type move, that could be a bit of a problem, but I'm not too worried myself. Or I could even go Dynamax. I was thinking, what should I do? Should I save the Dynamax? Decide to not save the Dynamax, and uh, I just went for Psychic anyway. That did uh, okay damage, considering what EVs are in it. And now we've got will o -Wiz. So will o -Wiz is going to prevent me from using any Rock Throws. It didn't really matter anyway. You know, Sorok didn't really have a lot of attack going for it with all of its EV investment. So it's got the leftovers, but the burn's pretty much going to get rid of that leftover damage. Now it's like, okay, does this thing have like Hex or something like that? Uh, like a ghost type move? I'm just going to keep going for Psychic over and over. That's the best I could do. It'd be nice if this set had like like Rest on or something like that. That'd be really good. So go for it yet. Another Psychic. We got Nightshade, so it's got a fixed damage move. Nightshade's really nice with the, um, you know, the burn damage. So Sorok's going to be around for about, you know, two more turns. And then it's going to go down. I mean, Solrock, like I had a battle, right, with, with Solrock. It didn't get attacked the whole time, right? But it sat on the field using Cosmic Power and Rock Polish for the entire Max Ray battle. It, it didn't even get attacked once, I, like except for like really weak moves, like weak area effect move, but it did nothing. It literally did nothing the whole battle. It didn't even use right like, rock throw once. It was probably the most, like, I was probably the most like, salty at that point. That was when Max Ray battles were like, you know, when they first came out and stuff, and I was trying to get the really powerful, uh, you know, G-Spot Pokemon, all that sort of stuff. Okay, now my next Nightshade, the next Nightshade that hits me is definitely going to take out the Solrock, because that obviously is level dependent. So we're doing, um, Level 50 at the moment, so Nightshade will always do, uh, you know, 50 damage. If we're doing level 100, we're both level 100, you know, it's going to do like 100 damage. So down goes my Sorok there. Unfortunately, but Sorok did a pretty good job. Dropped that Zigzagoon and did some good damage to the baby Kofferigus. So now we're going to bring in the EV. I can go for a Bite here. Now, Ghost-type Pokemon are actually pretty good against this team because my team isn't very good to, you know, to start with. So I've got to go for a Dynamax again. Both battles, actually, a lot of the battles I did, I went Dynamax Eevee. It worked pretty nicely with the Max Strike, and I could use, um, you know, Max Darkness on the bite too, which is going to be pretty good for getting rid of this Pokemon. So, big old Eevee, you ready for this uh, cry, people? That's awesome. i got to do, like, a Pikachu sweep. So the Pikachu goes like, pee, like Pikachu. Anyway, so we got uh, the big uh, Max Darkness on the Baby Coprigus, and that is going to go down. It was only on a little bit of health. I'd actually say it would have lived if it was on full health if I didn't drop its health down from the Soul Rock. Okay, that's two Pokemon down. Now, this was probably the most interesting part of uh, this battle. So I did notice in the uh, team preview, they had an EV as well. So this is EV versus EV. We got one big EV versus one small EV. Which one's going to win? The big one or the small one? I was thinking, you know, is it going to be big or is it going to be small? But it turns out, guys, we're going to have two big EVs on the field at once. However, both EVs are going to be a little bit different. We got the uh, G-Spot EV versus the normal EV. Get ready for this cry. All right, so uh, we got a full health on that one. I've got, I've had one turn of, uh, of the Dynamax already. This Dynamax and and Dynamax, and now uh, we got a Max Strike coming from that EV on my EV. It, it's about a three hit KO on that one. Now this move is broken. That was its um, signature move, and obviously after it does that, the opponent falls in love. So it's like using a tr it, like using a move and a track at the same time. Now I do get around that the first time, which is really good, and I can clearly see that's a two hit KO. Only just so, and it's also going to drop the speed of the other the EV. So that means I can outspeed it and take it out before my Dynamax actually wears out, which is going to be like super super good. So uh, all I got to do is actually get around the infatuation, and I don't. And uh, now we got another G-Max Cuddle from EV, and that's going to do some pretty good damage to my EV. I just lived there on 46 health, and my EV is going to go small again. Now, I can go for a quick attack here to take it out. It's only on a little bit of health. I mean, I'm sure I can crit it, guys. So I'm sure I can get that amazing crit to take it out. Or I could opt to go for a bite and try and flinch it. That was sort of my options, but flinch is not going to work right. So I thought, okay, I know that I can't take it out. Let's go into another Pokemon, which is going to be Wobbuffet. I might be able to, you know, take it out that way. So we've got a G-Max Cuddle on the Wobbuffet. Now, Eevee's going to have to force, like, it's going to have to force this Wobbuffet to love it. And it's going to be small again, which is good.
I can go for a counter and uh, trap this in. It's got Shadow Tag's ability too, if that one wasn't, you know, already obvious. So go for counter. I know EV generally has physical moves. It pretty much is bad with uh, special moves. And we've got to retaliate here on the Wobbuffet. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but I'm still going to get some Rocky Helmet damage. And EV was already on like a little bit of health. And counter is going to finish off the EV. Wobbuffet is actually pretty handy in both these battles. It's quite a good Pokemon. If you know they, um, they've only got physical moves or special moves, they don't have any setup moves or taunt or anything like that, or the choice uh, banded scarf, specs, that sort of thing. Wolfen's actually pretty good, because you can just swap it in, and uh, you know, you can take the damage and throw it back at them. Alright, next Pokemon we've got is Woolaloo, uh, Shiny Woolaloo here. I can go for a, a counter or a mirror code. I was thinking, okay, Woolaloo's generally got physical moves, right? Let's go for counter again. So Woolaloo's going to go for the payback there. It's going to do a little roll, but Alfie's uh, Wolfen is going to be able to live that one. I get some nice, uh, I get some nice damage from the Rocky Helmet, go for another counter, does some big damage, almost take out Wooloo. This is almost like the first battle uh, with the it was with the Pikachu and stuff before. Now, Wooloo actually has to attack me, and it's actually going to go down to the Rocky Helmet too. So we got another payback on the Wobbuffet. Wobbuffet is going to go down, but Wobbuffet is going to take another victim with the Rocky Helmet. So Wobbuffet doing an amazing job there. We've got two more Pokemon left, and I've got uh, three more left. I've got that EV with a little bit of health, which is going to be kind of handy too. Now, next Pokemon we got is Cash, and I'm thinking that's going to be a Meow. So we're going to bring in William this time. William is the Mudbray. So William's attacks are as follows, if I didn't already say. We had high horsepower, obviously, and we had superpower. Superpower is, like, really nice on this one, too. We had strength and rock tomb. So it's this one probably isn't all that bad. It's probably the fact that it's a baby Pokemon, right? It's slow, and it can be easily one-shotted by you know, a, a special, uh, you know, super effective move. It does have the Focus Sash though, but it sort of isn't the greatest Pokemon. I could, I could definitely count like a lot better Pokemon than Mudbray, right? All right, so Meowth is going to go down there to the superpower, and uh, goodbye Meowth, it was nice knowing you. We have one more Pokemon left on their team, and I've still got, uh, I've still got three left that I haven't used one of my others too. So the last one we got is the Thick Chew. I think this is going to be Big Pikachu. I, they had like a couple of options for them to actually uh, G-Max, I think. Okay, so I'm going to swap this out. I have dropped my defenses a uh, just a wee little bit. And uh, now we're going to go into uh, the Togepi. Now, this Togepi, you haven't seen much in both these battles. But I can guarantee if you stick around after this battle, you'll be seeing a lot of Togepi. I'm not going to spoil everything. I'm not going to spoil the surprise. you got to check out the bonus battle at the end. So we're doing a double swap there. It's going to go for a Nuzzle. I'm obviously a ground type. So I smelt that electric Move for a mile away. I can go for the uh, high horsepower and take the uh, Pikachu out easy. I, I could literally go for any move here. I think strength would nearly take Pikachu out. That's how bad its defenses are. Or Rock Tomb, like one of those two like weak moves. So we've got Pikachu going for the Mega Kick there. Mega Kick does some mega damage. And Mudbray is going to go for the final horse, high horsepower. And uh, that is the Pikachu down. Hope you guys enjoyed both these battles. It's great to do another theme team again. I'll have more coming your way next week. And enjoy the bonus battle. It definitely doesn't feature a little Togepi.